Uh, right. So definitely make sure that if you're able to include a build, especially if it's a game that is mechanics driven, definitely include a build or else, you know, you can talk, you can sit down and talk about Celeste all day until you yeah. play the game. You don't really know what that game is. Okay. Yeah, so. so a couple questions about the build. Um, mm -hmm. And then also I have a question about these three things. So yeah. the first question I have is, does the build, does length matter? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, build, uh, the, well, okay. Sorry. Let me, let me, let me redact that because, because it heavily depends on what game you're making, right? Like if you're making a 4X strategy game that's similar to Civilization, uh, yeah, the, the length is gonna matter. I can't play a five minute demo of Civ and, and yeah. know what I got myself into. I probably like took two turns and moved some units around and that was it. Uh, so that wouldn't tell me anything about Civ. Um, so it really heavily depends on what, um, what you're selling. Okay. The I think the the there are two ways to approach the build if you're if you're looking at your game, you can either approach it as a vertical slice or really kind of a perfect picture is is what we call it. So a vertical slice is technically something that's a little bit more lengthy, um, but uh, as, but has has like the the kind of the main features, but you're able to kind of dive into it for a longer period of time. So like maybe spend an hour playing something and checking out the mechanics. Maybe the graphics aren't super polished. Maybe the story isn't fully written, uh, the execution isn't perfect, but you know you can play for like an hour and and generally feel get a feel for the mechanics. Mm -hmm. That would be a vertical slice, and it's generally a better fit for something like a uh, action based game, a mechanics driven game, uh, something that's like Celeste, for example. So the other one, the perfect picture one, this is more of the, the really the the horizontal slice, which is uh, you have a perfect picture of what the game looks like, but it's very, very short. Uh, it is basically an entirely finished five minutes mm. of your game. So this is probably a better fit for something a little bit more narrative. Like if you're pitching something like Edith Finch or, you know, like Tacoma or something like that, you're able to walk around, talk to people, hear the voice acting, really get a sense of just the gorgeous surroundings and the yep. music. Uh, and and feel like you want to be a part of this world, and then now it's over, and you want to you want to explore more. That's okay. that's like another really good pitch. So generally, you want to go for one of those two. Okay, that's that's super helpful. So, guys, you don't have to make a full game. You don't even have to make it halfway done. Um, and what I'm doing, I can tell my audience what what my plan is. So for Father, um, firstly, my 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 the goal with Father is find probably find just first person horror publishers, people who love horror or first person. And then I'm going to pitch to those, um, those publishers, a 10 minute hyper polished demo, um, with all the voice actors, all the story elements that really hook the audience, great ambience, great feel. Um, and then include that also in the trailer. So instead of me and my team focusing on a 20 minute demo, to really get them to hooked on the mechanics, it's really trying to hook them on the inspiration, like giving them the heartbeat of the game. And also what you were saying, Z, letting them know what the final product will look like. So that's that's sort of my approach. Now, my next question about the three things that you mentioned is, what's the order in which they see these things? My, my assumption is like, okay, so some publishers who maybe in times of, I don't know, COVID when things were really stressful, they immediately look at the budget. Um, or some people look at the trailer first, but I highly doubt that they're gonna open up the demo first. So can you give us sort of the order and maybe even go to like the the the, the more granular stuff, like the subject line, all that, if you could sort of break down the order and the hierarchy of the pitch and what's most important. Right, so, so on the topic of subject line, I'll just quickly comment on this. Subject line, as long as you don't say something really pointless or stupid and be like, hey, check out my game, that would be the <laughs> thing. You say, know what's right? weird is I answer those emails. Those are the right. ones I click on. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Um, I never get them. Um, yeah, like unless if you say something really dumb, yeah. you're going to get wrecked. Um, because, I mean, like I said, we get we get a lot of pitches. We get a pitch every couple of hours or so. But we still, I mean, that's the, if, if someone's job at a company is to take pitches for games that we publish that's their job they're not going to miss any emails in fact if they missed any email at all that's that's bad that's like yeah. they, them doing their job poorly so any competent publisher will essentially read every single pitch um that that comes through and we certainly do i i in fact read every single game that's pitched to 34 myself um 
Wow. So, so the subject line, I don't know if it really matters um, as long as you just do a, do a good one. Um, uh, do, okay, so that, that sounded weird, but, but like, do, do, like generally describe your game in a sentence. Honestly, dude, that you surprises know, like, me so much. Yeah. Um, um, cause I thought subject line was like everything cause they're not going to read every, every pitch. Yeah, uh, you, I mean, you get a lot of pitches, but you don't get that many pitches, right? Like yeah. it's kind of like, again, there's dedicated staff and, you know, professionals sitting on the other side of the computer, just sitting there waiting for pitches. So, so the subject, like there's for, for us is more like, there's always, well, like, we're always going to check out a pitch regardless of what the subject line is. Um, we might not take very long at it. I'll get into that in a second. Uh, but but that is, um, you know, regardless, that's uh, the email will get opened. So um, with that said, really the most important thing is the visual. Uh, if it's a screenshot or a trailer, that's always going to be the go the go to just because it's the easiest thing to look at. Humans are very uh, visual creatures. You know, like we judge things by visuals more strongly than anything else. So um, if you open an email and then there's an image right there that shows the most beautiful shot of your game um or explains what your game is about that's it you know that's that's the attention grabber that's the, that's uh, okay. the only thing that really matters i'm so glad uh, you said that because i thought that images would sometimes they like, i don't know why but like i was in in email marketing for my previous job and we actually stayed away from sending images at the time it was about 10 years ago so it's probably changed but i was always worried it wouldn't get delivered it would get sent to their spam or like their promotions folder um, but what you're saying is a good rule of thumb is just the, your best looking image, maybe a screenshot with your logo. Right. And maybe they click on that and it takes them to the, the pitch in a website. Yeah. That could work. Or you could just have the pitch as a text underneath, or you could attach the PDF of the pitch on the, on the thing, or okay. maybe there's a link to a Google, Google uh, sheets or not Google sheets, uh, slides. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but that image at the top, it really matters. And, and to answer your concern, Thomas, uh, you, you're right in a email marketing capacity because the person who is on the other side of the computer didn't want your email. So you're kind of forcing yeah. them to read your marketing message, right? Meanwhile, you have to realize publishers are hungry for games. We're always looking for games to, uh, to, to take on as a, as a company. So we're, when emails come in, we're excited. Like, oh, wow, I can't wait to read this. Right. And we have dedicated channels, right? Like ours is publishing at serenityforge.com. And we make sure that no email is ever blocked on that on that channel just so that we get those images into the emails. Uh, and then lastly, you know, like we uh, we overall just like prioritize these emails in our own systems. We make sure that it's all categorized correctly so that, you know, when the time comes to check to see all of the pitches that got in, got in today or got in this week, we're just able to write, go through it right, you know, right there. Right. So all of that system, you know, in a professional uh, publishers, uh, you know, backend, it's all already taken care of. You don't have to worry about ending it into the spam folder or whatever okay. like that. And by the way, guys, I wanted to let you know that my brand new course, Easy 3D, is totally free right now. Click below to enroll for free and you'll immediately be taken to the program where you're going to learn how to make your very first 3D game. And here's the best part. You're going to do it fast. And you really don't need to know anything about Unity or code or 3D modeling. It's really kind of easy and it's totally free. Click below to make your very first 3D game. I can't wait to see you succeed.